nothing like the product of the earth contains and brings in the sum of all the things that are found in the land. The earth does not produce by chance, as everything is the synthesis of infinite stories, of human parts, of discoveries, of mistakes and returns, and of new progress. All this tells a story, and what characterizes it it is that so many thin wires are eventually connected and intersected and form a canvas and a design that would not have been the same if even one wire had another color or were missed. For us, a valley of vineyards is not a company, but the final part of a history whose current chapter we arrived to build while others will follow. In the same way for us, Ours is not a valley like many others. It has those woods, those mountains, those streams, and the current of air that make it unique among all. A small world, not to be featured elsewhere, except in other ways and with other characters. What we are about to tell you is the history of our territory and its soul. There is only one really nice way to enter the territory of Pietranico, and it is the least conventional. Not from the roads that, with a tangle of paths and villages, ascend from the valley of Pescara and from the abbey of San Clemente a Casauria, which dominated the area in the Middle Ages, but by barrier mountains that constitute the last fortress of the mountains of the Apennines toward the Adriatic Sea. Here, Behind the village of Pietranico, the imposing system of the Monte del Gran Sasso thins down, descending to a thousand meters and then plunging into the gorges of Popoli, separating it from the mountains of the Maiella. From here, our tale of Pietranico and the Rosarubra biodynamic estate, seen from above, with the eyes of the auk or eagle, the shepherd, or the clouds created by the wind of the southwest. The image from the top of the vineyards and olive groves, as can be appreciated by the surrounding hills, expresses the answers of Tenuta Rosarubra better than words. The cultivated lands alternates with oak woods and in some cases they are surrounded by it. The forest, still more than the vineyards, dominates and gives character to the landscape. The ancestral relationship between primitive land and domesticated land is reproposed between what the work of man has subtracted, modeled and guided, and what the free nature's inspiration has continued for millennia to express without conditioning. The forest is in fact natural, very little has been modified, much has been generously left for the enjoyment of respectful fruition and for the life of the wild animals. A vocation to biological comes out that is not only in the techniques adopted, but in the natural order. The wood supervises twice on the crops, with its protective belt isolates them from the surrounding land and from any contamination, and with its presence it imprints a non-formal character to the principle of respect of the environment and of the products that are at the base of the estate biodynamic rosarubra an unspoiled oasis immersed in a territory rich in history, strong and resistant like the medieval tower guarding the pass, La Forca di Penne. Damaged by the recent earthquake, the tower still resists in its height, reduced to a spire but visible from two slopes for tens of kilometers, up to the sea, 30 kilometers far from there. The tower emphasizes the strategic importance of the place, control and defense. The road that rises to the tower has the gradualness of the ancient paths and takes from the 500 meters of the plateau to the almost thousand of gallows, which at the last moment is announced with the tower. A few steps and the horizon open towards the east, a huge, solemn, placid expanse of sloping hills, separated from the valleys, 
of the waterways and from sporadic gullies. A gradual descent towards the sea that is glimpsed on the horizon. There is a village on almost each knoll, the first one being Pietranico. Before that, to guard on the right, lies the village of Corpara. The origins of this medieval village are very ancient, as confirmed by the finding of important archaeological finds, including a sanctuary dedicated to the god Jupiter. Many scholars believe that in this territory, the famous oath was held, which sanctioned in 98 BC the agreement of the Lega Italica. In the distance, a peak of rock next to the church of the village, taller than it and more pointed to its belfry, visible even at great distance. Could it be the Pietra Iniqua that would give the country its name? An unusual architectural element which makes you think of stories of witches, of spells, or in search of a last shelter of defense in the Dark Ages, in which the peoples of the Saracens, Lombards and Normans alternated in their raids, and Pietranico was agricultural colony of the Abbey of San Clemente, and community of life and work. The walls then gave a more extensive shelter, leaving the Petra to the role of symbol and rock of last defense. In the ancient documents, the Petra Iniqua is an immediate reference to the great rocky piece that lies at the top of the hill, at the center of the country, and the meaning seems to derive from the Latin, unequal, rugged, and bumpy. The name Pietranico appears in one of the most important documents for the reconstruction of the Italian medieval life, the Chronicon Casa Uriense, a code of 272 parchment sheets, whose original copy is in the National Library of Paris since 1494. All the few historical references lead to consider Pietranico an agricultural settlement subordinated to the Abbey of San Clemente in Casauria, founded in the year 1873 by the nephew of Charlemagne. The promotion to Castello and its fortification takes place just before the year 1000 in the context of an expansion of the Abbey to the whole territory with the flavor of the imperial protection. One of the 18 bronze door panels of the 1191 Abbey, with the castle subdued to its authority, reports Pietra Iniqua. Very important for the territory is the Madonna in terracotta called O Pietra Nico, an almost natural statue of the 500, which has a tormented history. It was in L'Aquila during the earthquake of 2009, already restored for previous damage, after a lucky finding among scraps. Involved in a collapse of the National Museum, it broke again in 24 fragments and infinite small flakes, so as to seem unrecoverable. Thanks to the financing of the Italian-American community of New York and a year of difficult restoration, it has returned to live, even with the contribution of Rosa Rubra, and now returned again to Pietranico in San Rocco's church. She is an actual, prayerful position, the mantle, full of pleats, is typically 16th century stylized, and so is the cap. She had the baby in a slap, but she was lost. We do not know when. Beyond the religious value, to us it looks like a woman of our land, a mother who came back to visit us from a time farther than the four centuries declared by a profound history that belongs to us. The Abbey of San Clemente a Casaria is presented with the medieval splendor of its architecture, embellished inside by laces and carved and perforated stone flowers. Original icons of this land, which for many centuries remained isolated, could develop in its own characteristics in the language, the name of the places, the traditions, and the art. It is difficult for the visitor today beyond the beauty of the Abbey and the place, to imagine or read from the symbols and the few inscriptions what was the importance of this monastic institution in the early Middle Ages. Yet it was part of the imperial abbeys 
three feudal centers of government of the territory, with an administrative structure and extended domains for entire regions. A cultural supremacy was added to this. In an epoch of illiterate kings, Charlemagne signed with a monogram, actually kind of a cross, and the custody and copy of what had been saved of ancient culture was here, in the abbeys. The only reading skill was considered miraculous and a source of great power. All the territory is rich in fascinating stories, and that of Rosa Rubris is the story of a meeting between man and nature. It takes place about 390 meters above sea level, where the woods look at the sea and the hills lie eastward to wait for the rising sun. More than 10 years ago, all 30 hectares of vines have been planted organically and today, the estate also boasts a biodynamic certification, which is the true pledge of love between man and his land. In this natural oasis extremely cured, from ancient vineyards are born extraordinary grapes in perfect harmony with the environment. The berry reaches that balance where the constituent components tend to the extreme defense of the seed as the last symbol of life and eternity. The peel, the pulp, and the infinite substances it contains are exclusively to nourish this genetic message and allow the plant to defy time. That is why everything is adopted to a new concept, where it is no longer the man who manages and determines the transformation into wine, but it is the grape that was born here up to regulate the creation year after year of the best wine. It is a natural response to the interpretation of a seasonal evolution of the vine, and only the man who knows the vineyards perfectly can be able to seize the moment. The history of the territory indicates the particular vocation of the place to the cultivation of the vine since ancient times. It is now certain that the Montepulciano d'Abruzzo is present in these areas since immemorial time, decreeing the starting point of its spread throughout the region. Indeed, one of the peculiar characteristics of Pietranico is represented by the typical and ancient basins of stone destined for the harvest. The tanks are a system known since ancient times. They allow to crush the grapes near the vineyards and transport the must more comfortably to the village. The concentration of tanks in Pietranico is very high and unique. These are large artifacts made of protruding rocks consisting of large rectangular tanks arranged on several levels, joined by holes or channels, in order to favor the pressing. These rocky ledges have therefore been exploited for the agricultural activity prevailing in the area, viticulture. Ancient texts cite the cultivation of the vine several times, with references to the low rows close together and refers to the ancient mode of viticulture Abruzzo, the vine arborata or maritata.
Archaeological evidence of the cultivation of the vine in Abruzzo has been found since the Bronze Age, 13th century BC. This is not surprising if one thinks that the whole Mediterranean basin was cultivated the Vitis vinifera from the first millennium. The poet Plinius and other Latin authors tell us of the use of cultivating the vine throughout Italy. The cultivation arborata or maritata to trees was ancient, born in the Etruscan area and then passed to the Roman world. And it's still found in the Middle Ages of Abruzzo. Many varieties of Abruzzo wine are cited by the authors of ancient Rome. biodynamic estate, the typical pergola alternates with low rows. The grape harvest is made in the cellar ripe grapes that do not lose the balance between acidity, sugars and tannins. The winemaker tries to let it be time to affect the character of the future wine. Fermentations and prolonged macerations in ancient vats inside the cellar prepare the base for the wine that will pass depending on its style, in the new oak barriques or in all big casks where it rests for years and eventually give the synthesis of its adventure in Pietranico. The idea of these wines exceeds the concept of territory, understood simply as a set of rules to homogenize different production environments and also the concept of regionalization as it goes to express itself with what the single vineyard has produced. Like Pecorino, autochthonous grape variety of Abruzzo, which here has lived a particular adventure, taken to more than a thousand meters of altitude from the vineyards with more than 100 years of age. It has been regrafted with special techniques in the biodynamic Rosarubra estate, where it can continue to live for another hundred years. Born in collaboration with the prestigious University of Perugia, this wine, called the White Shaman, is unique in the world. This short wandering started from the world of vines leads us to consider that the three pillars of the ancient economy, wheat, wine and oil, Abruzzo could compete for the oil and for the vine, both pushed at elevations even higher than the usual ones through unimaginable techniques and fatigues today. There was a fourth pillar for the Abruzzo economy though, which in the Middle Ages and up to the 800 year represented the first one in importance, sheep breeding. In the Latin world, the flock was synonymous with wealth and the mountainous territory of Abruzzo is in fact ideal for this economy. The cacciare or casare are buildings in dry stone tholos, done with concentric self-bearing circles prove this intense pastoral activity on all our mountains. It is a primordial architecture dating back to the second millennium BC and present throughout the Mediterranean, but reached to us still alive and present on our mountains. They prove an itinerant activity whose pillar was the tracks. The tracks are the main axis of this migrant breeding based on small movements from valley to mountain for small flocks and on paths of hundreds of kilometers from Abruzzo to Apulia for the large herds which would winter in the lowlands with milder climate and food available. It is such an ancient use that at the time of the Romans already existed. The tracks are the soul of Abruzzo, like its hundred and more castles. They follow paths formed by themselves in prehistoric times as they are the most suitable and shortest routes. The main of the tracks is the Tratturo Regio that connects Abruzzo with Apulia and also passes by Pietranico. In this natural ecosystem, 
inherited from history and preserved with care until today, much of the work of protection and respect of the order and of the natural equilibrium is entrusted to man. Ensuring biodiversity and the survival of the flora and fauna of a place is one of the main aspects of those who choose to adopt biodynamic farming techniques. Rosa Rubra is the example of how it is possible to obtain an excellent wine without compromising the territory, indeed protecting and improving it. The biodiversity in the estate is abundant and varied. The arboreal essences are spontaneous, such as oak, holm oaks, and roverella, alternate with the officinal plants and the wild herbs surrounding the estate. The two fishy water mirrors are visited by migratory birds, such as ducks and herons, which often meet here. The preservation of biodiversity is also entrusted to small workers, bees, very important for their pollination work, bees are also a natural indicator of air hygiene, as they fail to survive in a place that is not 100% healthy and natural. In the estate, the bees live free to carry out their work, so important for all of us, and in the evening they rest in special houses, where they produce a wonderful honey, full of all the scents that nature spontaneously gives. Nature in Abruzzo is an undisputed protagonist. Over a third of the territory is protected in a system of three national parks. Abruzzo, the oldest in Italy, the Gran Sasso in Monti della Laga and the Maiella. A regional park, Bellino Sirente, and 38 local protected areas. This characteristic, which makes Abruzzo the most green region of Italy, denotes the high quality of the territory, but also the sharing that nature protection has found in the resident population. Biodiversity is such that 75% of European animal and plant species are present in Abruzzo. The brown bear Marsicano and the Apennine wolf have regained vigor and sometimes come out of the perimeter of the parks. The chamois, roe deer, and deer are now counted in a thousand and more exemplary each. The lynx and the royal eagle reappeared, not counting the dozens of wild species less rare. This is a land which points much on the quality of the environment and of life, and consequently on the good products of the territory loved by the time of the production of the matter, gradually along all the phases of its transformation. A region therefore suited to sustainable tourism, small centers, small receptive and high quality facilities, widespread hotels and above all, widespread beauty. Just think of the hundred and more castles, the intact villages, the medieval historical centers, the thousand churches ranging from the high middle ages to the Baroque, their paintings, the archaeological sites. There are so many that the visitors can find themselves in small company or only in each one in contact with the spirit of the places and with the friendliness of the inhabitants who still welcome the stranger with old courtesy. The wine reflects the natural elements from which it derives, and therefore the best possible wine comes from an uncontained nature and the ability and passion of men who make it a unique product. All the story and what characterizes it is that so many thin wires are eventually connected and intersected as they form a canvas and a design that would not have been the same if even one wire had had another color or were missed.